Hey everybody! Uh, this is kind of the continuation of a project that started over a year ago. These were the 6mm 1 285th scale um, terrain for like Battletech and Robotech minis and any other city warfare 6mm game set in kind of a modern era. So if you wanted to, I mean, you could if you really wanted to and do a modern tank battle with them, you could. Although you don't really have too many city fights of those. But anyway, will work for almost any 6mm game. These were just kind of some basic buildings. So I did kind of a, a block building. I did you know, like a hotel or apartment complex. And then I did this, this two tower building. Which is kind of nice. I mean, a lot of options with them. The one thing that I unfortunately caused this project to stall was just the detail level. The detail level on these is really low and I thought that was going to be a problem. Well, I started to actually play some games that use this scale and talking to some of the players and those sort of things and found out that really the detail level on the buildings isn't really as critical as I thought it was. Part of it is because you need so many buildings. The other part is the amount of effort that goes into them. It takes a lot of time to cut these buildings, it turns out. It turns out that in something like this, there are actually more cuts, more individual cuts for the laser, more laser time, than there are in my larger buildings. So, for example, a building in the larger set where I'm cutting, you know, like something a lot bigger, may take a half hour, something like this may take 45 minutes or longer, depending on the building. And that's just for one of them, so that time really starts to add up. If you add an engraving, it gets even longer. So, to simplify things, a lot of the people that are doing these are just doing them just that. They're doing them as flat as possible, simple as can go, so you can crank out a lot of buildings and flesh out your full setup. Um, for those of you that want to take it further, and those that want that high detail, then you go into the resin casting stuff. But, those are more expensive, and your selection is a lot more limited. Anyway, these were kind of the core initial set, and what this was was actually, they were adjustable, so you had a base building, and then you could stack multiples if you wanted to do them taller. Um, but really, those are not why I'm here, and why I'm talking to you about them. Move some of the stuff out of the way. Reason is, new stuff. So decided to hop back on the project and hit it full force and I've got I believe it's a dozen new building designs. These will pretty much with a dozen designs gives you enough options that you can do a full table and have a lot of variety in that table. From little two-story buildings like this one which is just a warehouse style building kind of a shipping and trucking so you've got like your your doors for the trucks to come in. And you've got those front and back. It's even got side light windows. And then you have the little office part next to it, just a little one story office. So if I were to put our standard three and a half, four story tall mech near it, it scales out pretty nice with those. There's also enough space because they're flat on top that you could actually, if you really wanted to, you can do buildings on top. I haven't done destroyed buildings of any versions of any of these yet, but I could actually even do those if 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 there's a demand for them, if people really want those. But this would be one design, so that's one. As far as materials on this one, this one was cut out of wood. Um, the final ones will probably be cut out of acrylic, mainly because the acrylic, when I'm cutting a lot of these small a lot of small cuts. When you put them really close together in wood, you can run into problems with chipping and you'll actually, I'll show you a few of them that I did chipping on. But these are kind of, depending on the model, it'll either be wood or acrylic. And it's going to vary from model to model. Assembly is still the exact same because these are painted things. It's not that big of a deal sending them out in acrylic because you can use just plain super glue on them. If it was something that you weren't going to paint, then I'd look, diff I'd look at a different material than doing them in acrylic. But anyway, Back to this because I've got quite a few of them to show you and I got a limited amount of time. So next up I did this design on the building. This one was just needed something a little bit different. So it's a three-story with a kind of a top building. Again, you have the flat surface. One neat thing that you can do with these, and this is something that I actually like with them. 
um, one of the people I talked to, he suggested that you get colored gels. Oops, huh. had a piece that didn't fall out of that one. Colored gels, and you line the inside with colored gels. And then you paint, you paint your building, whatever color you want, then you do the inside with colored gels. And you get the flickering tea lights, or the little LED tea lights, and you put one of those inside of each of them. And then that allows the buildings to actually light up. So it gives you a little bit more, a little bit more character to your buildings. I had some of those lights around here, but it's probably buried on my desk. But this would be another building. This one is actually a little bit bigger. The original buildings I did were rather small, and that their footprint of the building itself is rather small. So I mean, you're talking about with these, you're talking about a lot bigger building. I think this one, if I can find my ruler, this one is like a five by five building and it's, let's see, let's turn this around so we can actually get one that shows inches and it's about four inches tall. So I mean it's a pretty decent sized building, gives you a nice building to work with but let's blast through these. Next up I wanted something a little bit more flashy. So this one, move this a little closer, so this one again is another building design. A little bit more variety to it in that this one would be, I don't know, like an office complex or something along those lines where you have, or even a hotel where you have that car park area that they drive up to, or a bank maybe. We have that car park area that you drive up to, and then you have the main building and an extension building. This one I actually did some layering on, so that you have a few spots to jet out so you can do something a little bit different with it and I even put some stuff on the top of it. It's a nice little building. This gives you a nice simple shape. That one also was done in acrylic for because that was the material. These are all still prototypes. Uh, next up did this and I'll bring this a little, whoops, there we go. This one back. This is a little bit bigger building. This one is when I was doing the wood prototypes and I was talking about the amount of cut time. So this one I actually did just to speed it up I only cut two sides of it just to show what the cuts would look like. But again, this one I've got a little bit of layering so it gives you a little more shape, a little more definition. But here's what I was talking about where you get the tear out when I'm doing them in wood. So these, well, like I said, these will probably end up all being acrylic as opposed to being wood buildings. Um, just for the simplicity of it. But this one is a lot taller, you can see. So instead of being the normal three-story building like some of the others, this one's a little bit bigger. Um, gives you a little bit more beef to your table and more more variations in height. Because if you look at any city skyline, there are going to be different heights of buildings. Okay, so there was that one. Then we needed something else. So I'm going to show two of these at the same time. This was kind of a connecting building. So this one, the idea behind this one was that you could actually build entire complexes. So I could have one building set that one next to it and make a larger complex out of it. This one I actually did an opening at the bottom so it's almost like it's an elevated one so if you were doing this like over a road or something you could. Turned out pretty nice and again this would be another one of those where you have a few more options with it. You can run it by itself or you can put it with multiples. Because what's a city without bridges? Did a little one lane bridge or two lane bridge rather for six millimeters so you'd have your cars drive over it and you can do this over water so this would be great if you're building a custom table or you wanted to add some water elements. But you can't do one bridge without doing another. So I did this bridge which is a lot bigger. And I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way. This one, I believe this is almost, yeah, this one is about 11 inches long. So you've got a nice long bridge with fairly beefy spans. As far as height on it, it is a decent height. It's about twice as wide as the other one, so this one would actually be like a four lane, a four or a six lane road. And I even included little arches to just give you something more to look at with it. So that would be the bridge. Now we get into some of the bigger buildings, and by bigger I mean a lot bigger. We have this one, which I'm going to need to actually back the camera up. So you can see that's a lot taller. That is a, let's see, what's that? That's, that's, 
11 minus 3, that's a 9 inch tall building. So this one is kind of big. Again, this was one of those where if you've seen all those glass towers, if you've been in any big city where you've got all glass buildings, that was the idea with this one. This was the one that actually gave me the idea that I was thinking of when, with the lighting on the inside. So this one, what you do when you get it is you put a colored gel of your choice on the inside of it. Paint the thing, obviously, first. In this case, I'd prob this one I'm probably going to paint gray, um, just a steel gray, and then put a like a a blue or a metallic gel on the inside of it so it looks like the glass on the buildings. But it's a lot taller. I mean, that is a pretty beefy building. And to not be left out, I needed something else also beefy. So this one would be one of your downtown skyscraper type buildings. And again, this is a pretty big building. I, one thing I did different with this one was every, every three stories I added just a little balcony or step area, just to add some more, some more design and shape to it. Um, it's also got a nice big opening down at the bottom. So, and again, a flat roof. What's neat about these are you can actually add additional elements. And unfortunately, I can't find it. But I mean, I've, if you wanted to put something on top of this one, for example, if you wanted to double up the buildings, and I'll move this up, you actually could make taller buildings just by just by putting multiple buildings together so that gives you kind of more options with it then the last one was the big one and by big I mean really big and that I'm gonna have to push all the way back and I'm gonna have to move the camera so you can see it That's sort of my Empire State style building. That one is over 12 inches tall to be exact. I believe it was 14 inches tall um, and 8 inches at the base. So it's a pretty beefy building. I mean, when I put the guys up next to it, they're practically not even in the shot. But that's one of the biggest buildings and that's probably going to be the largest one that I do. That's more of a centerpiece kind of building where you're going to put something like that in place as to build other stuff around. I do, though, want to build a version of it that's more open like this. So, I don't know. Right now, that's the tallest one that I do, but there may be something even bigger. In the case of this one, this would be really nice with the lighting inside of it. But because not everybody has the space... To store their buildings. This one I'd recommend doing like I did here and not gluing it all together just leaving them as separate sections because if you wanted to you could actually turn the individual separate sections into buildings. So all you'd have to do on this one would be a quick cut around here or even do your own base for it and pop a top on it and then you have another building. So you can do a, a lot more options with them. But these were kind of the main kind of the main group of buildings, all different shapes, all different sizes. Um, there are more. In fact, one of them just finished cutting. So there are a few more designs out there. This set, the whole group of it and everything about it will be out shortly. And I'll give you some more information about it then. Well, it's starting to get late. I've got more buildings to cut. So talk to you guys later.